Hello and welcome to News Tonight. I am Vishal Dahiya. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Union Cabinet clears ordinance to penalize people holding scrapped 500 and 1,000 rupee notes after December 30th deadline. Penalties to include financial fines and jail term of up to four years. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi asked Prime Minister Narendra Modi how much black money has been recovered since demonetization. BJP reacts, saying Congress does not stand with the poor. Indian Olympic Association triggers public outcry after it names Suresh Kalmari and Abhay Singh Chautala as lifetime presidents. Kalmari declines position. Fifteen coaches of Shialda Ajmer Express derail near Kanpur. No official reports of casualties. Over 50 people are injured. Let's now look at the news in details. With just two days left to deposit old currency in banks, the Union Cabinet today passed an ordinance to impose penalties for people holding scrapped 500 and 1,000 rupee notes beyond the December 30th deadline. The penalty includes a hefty fine or imprisonment. However, the government also added a three-month window between 1st of January 2017 and 31st March 2017 to deposit those old currency notes in specified offices of RBI, but only for the exigencies. The Union Cabinet on Wednesday cleared the promulgation of an ordinance to penalise people holding scrapped 500 and 1,000 rupee notes after the end of the December 30th deadline. The specified bank note cessation of liabilities ordinance will remove liability of the government and the RBI on the demonetised 500 and 1,000 rupee notes. The penalty for holding old currency in excess of 10 notes may include financial fines and a jail term of up to four years in certain cases. Only selected RBI branches will accept the old currency post-December 30th. Opposition parties have meanwhile questioned the government's policies on the note ban. Ideally, the government should have brought this law in the parliament during the winter session and the law should have been changed. But the government has chosen this backdoor ordinance method. We are opposed to this ordinance, Raj, but the government is increasingly relying on ordinances because the government does not want to be answerable. The cabinet committee chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi also approved a centrally sponsored scheme, namely road connectivity project for left-wing extremism affected areas. The scheme is aimed at improving rural road connectivity in 44 adjoining districts in different states. Ravindra Sharan's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi targeted the Prime Minister once again on the issue of demonetization and allegations of corruption against him. He was addressing party workers at the 132nd Foundation Day of the Congress Party. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi's list of questions for Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday included how much black money had been recovered since demonetization was announced on November 8th. Prime Minister ने ये यज्ञ की है, यज्ञ किया है। नुकसान गरीब लोगों का हुआ है, बलि गरीब लोगों की चढ़ाई गई है, किसानों की, मजदूरों की, छोटे दुकानदारों की, युवाओं की। इन सब ग्रुप्स को नुकसान हुआ है, और इस नुकसान के लिए सरकार को इनको कंपेंसेशन देना चाहिए। the Congress leader also attacked the government for putting a limit on withdrawal of money from banks, saying the government cannot stake a claim on people's hard-earned money. जो पैसा नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने बैंक्स में डलवाया है, वो हिंदुस्तान के लोगों का पैसा है, वो हिंदुस्तान की सरकार का पैसा नहीं है, बैंक्स का पैसा नहीं है। तो जो लिमिट लगाई गई है 24,000 रुपए की, उस लिमिट को अब आप हटाइए। क्योंकि इस लिमिट से आप हिंदुस्तान की फाइनेंशियल इंडिपेंडेंस छीन रहे हैं हमारे लोगों की फाइनेंशियल इंडिपेंडेंस आप छीन रहे हैं उनकी फाइनेंशियल इंडिपेंडेंस उनको आप वापस दीजिए 
While addressing the Congress Foundation Day in the morning, Gandhi had said that the notes ban is an example of how the Modi government has fostered fear among people. किसान को जबरदस्त चोट लगी है किसान का आप कर्जा माफ कीजिए और 20 परसेंट एमएसपी पे आप बोनस दीजिए जो उनका अभी पिछले दो महीने में नुकसान हुआ है बीपीएल परिवार की हर महिला को आप पच्चीस हजार रुपए दीजिए उनके बैंक में उनके अकाउंट में आप डालिए हाउ द बीजेपी वॉज क्विक टू रियक्ट से कांग्रेस डज नॉट स्टैंड विद दुअरियस issues that rahul gandhi raises have no traction with the people whatsoever he is actually speaking for the elite and he is speaking for the rich whereas the poor are only concerned about integrity in in public life they are concerned about uh, their own uh, uh, income and they are they are concerned about uh, every citizen of this country paying up their taxes and not keeping unaccounted black money The Congress leader has been relentlessly attacking the Prime Minister and his government on the issue of demonetization of the past few weeks, keeping up the pressure in every rally he addresses. But the BJP has also been relentless in its counter-attacks. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Former Home Secretary Anil Bajal is all set to become the new Lieutenant Governor of the National Capital Territory, a post which fell vacant after the sudden resignation of Najib Jung. President Pranab Mukherjee has accepted the appointment papers of Bajal as well as Najib Jung's resignation. Anil Bajal is a 1969 batch IAS officer and has donned many administrative hats. He retired from the service in 2006 as Secretary, Urban Development Ministry. Bajal was actively associated with the designing and rollout of 60,000 crore rupees Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission launched by the Manmohan Singh government. The former bureaucrat has also been the vice chairman of the Delhi Development Authority and headed key public sector companies like Prasar Bharti and Indian Airlines. Rail fracture is suspected to be the possible reason for the Ajmer Shalda Express derailment today. Over 50 passengers were reportedly injured in the incident that took place nearly 70 kilometers away from Kanpur. Investigations are on into what caused the accident. Meanwhile, Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu has announced excretia for the injured. In the early hours of Wednesday, 15 coaches of Sialda Ajmer Express derailed near Rura, 70 km from Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> यानी सबसे पहले मैं निकल के बाहर देखा था उधर तो देखा तो सारा यूं का डिपार्टमेंट खराब हो गया था बहुत हालत खराब हो गई हमारी इन दुर्घटना हुई वाकई में बहुत बड़ा हादसा था परंतु यहाँ के लोकल लोगों ने और यहाँ के प्रशासन ने काफी सहयोग किया द इंसिडेंट टुक प्लेस वेन द ट्रेन वॉज क्रॉसिंग अ ब्रिज ओवर अ ड्राई कैनाल फिफ्टीन कोचेज ऑफ दिस ट्रेन गॉड रेल the coaches which got derailed were six from the engine and up to 20th bisma 20th from the engine they got derailed the police information indicates that there are no uh, casualties in this uh, unfortunate accident there could be some minor injuries minor uh, bruises पुलिस की तरफ से जो भी जरूरी मदद थी वो समय से पहुंच गई थी कानपुर नगर से एम्बुलेंस आ गई थी गाड़ियां पैसेंजर के लिए गाड़ियां लगवा दी गई थी और ये सब ऑपरेशन इंजर्ड को हॉस्पिटल लाने का ऑपरेशन काम बहुत जल्दी से पूरा कर लिया गया ऑल पैसेंजर्स वर पुल्ड आउट फ्रॉम द डीरेल्ड कोचेज विद हेल्प ऑफ लोकल रेजिडेंस एंड द कानपुर पुलिस The injured passengers were admitted to the nearest hospitals while the stranded passengers were taken to the Kanpur railway station. Railway minister Suresh Prabhu has been monitoring the situation and said all assistance is being provided to those injured. He also said a thorough investigation will be carried out to ascertain the cause of the accident. Manni Rail Mantri ji ne nirdesh diye hai ki ghayalon ka ilaj bahut behtar tarike se ho relief or rescue must be se kiya jaye. वो घटनाक्रम पर बराबर नजर रखे हुए हैं घटना में किसी के मारे जाने की खबर और पुष्टि नहीं हुई है हर हादसा रेलवे के लिए एक दुखद और दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण घटना होती है और हर हादसे को हम एक चुनौती के रूप में लेते हैं गंभीरता से लेते हैं और ओवर द ईयर्स हमने काफी करेक्टिव मेजर्स लिए 
As of now, the Delhi Havra route via Kanpur has been temporarily closed and several trains have been derouted while some stand cancelled. This is the second rail accident in the Kanpur division within two months. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Samajwadi Party Supremo, Mulayam Singh Yadav, has announced a list of 325 candidates of the total 403 assembly seats in Uttar Pradesh. Mulayam said that the name of candidates for the rest of the seats will be announced soon. Out of the 325 candidates announced, 176 are sitting MLAs. Addressing the media in Lucknow, the SP chief has also ruled out any pre-poll alliance with any party. Mulayam also announced the name of his brother Shivpal Yadav from the Jaswant Nagar assembly seat. However, Akhilesh Yadav's name did not appear in the first list, which was announced in the absence of the chief minister. So, one Viral Acharya was appointed the Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of India. Acharya comes from an academic background. Before joining RBI, he was serving as CV Star Professor of Economics in the Department of Finance at New York University. Media reports said he has research interest in regulation of banks, corporate finance, credit risk and asset pricing. Acharya is also recipient of numerous awards, the latest being the Rising Star in Finance Award. The Appointments Committee of the Cabinet cleared his appointment for three years. Let's now take a look at some more news and updates from across the country in Nationwide. Clashes broke out at the AIA DMK headquarters in Chennai on Wednesday on the eve of party's general council meeting. The protest occurred when Rajya Sabha member Shashikala Pushpa's husband and lawyers arrived to submit nomination papers for the post of party general secretary. Shashikala Pushpa's husband, lawyers and supporters suffered injury as party cadres attacked them. The incident comes just a day ahead of the party's general council meeting, which will elect the party's general secretary. Former Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh Sundar Lal Patwa today died at an age of 92 after suffering a heart attack. Prime Minister Narendra Modi condoled the death of Sundar Lal Patwa and described him as a hard-working and dedicated leader. BJP President Amit Shah also expressed his condolences over the demise of the veteran party leader. The Enforcement Directorate has assisted a manager of a Kotak Bank branch in Delhi. This is in connection with its money laundering probe in a criminal case of detection of nine alleged fake accounts with deposits worth 34 crore rupees post-demonetization. Police had also arrested two persons last week for allegedly depositing black money worth 34 crore rupees in nine fake accounts being operated in the bank in Delhi. Let's take a short break here. People see Mr. Chenithala and Mr. Uman Chandi as two power centers. When the party is in crisis, there is no room for conflict or fighting. Your members lost the trust of the majority as well as the minority uh, sections. It will have recoiled itself. Congress will have the support of every community in the state. You have pointed out a striking similarity between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Chief Minister of Kerala, Pina Rai Vijayan. How does one really understand this similarity? Both are autocrats. Watch to the point with leader of the opposition in Kerala Assembly, Ramesh Chenithala, only on Raj Sabha Television. Welcome back. Suresh Kalmari today declined to take over the Indian Olympic Association Life Presidency. This comes a day after Sports Ministry issued a show cause notice at, to the IOA stating that all ties will be cut with the National Olympic body until Kalmari and Abhay Singh Chautala were removed from the positions. Both Kalmari and Chautala were unanimously selected as IOA life presidents by 150 members yesterday, disregarding corruption cases against them. 
a day after he was named lifetime president of the indian olympic association along with abhay singh chautala suresh kalmari on wednesday declined the position this was after the sports ministry issued a show cause notice to ioa saying all ties with the association will remain cut off till kalmari and abhay singh chautala are removed on tuesday sports minister vijay goel had lashed out at the decision calling it totally unacceptable the post that was offered to him by ioa he has voluntarily taken a decision not to accept any post till his name is cleared uh, by the court unko shokas notice bhej rahe hain jiska jawab wo denge jab tak in dono logon ko suresh kalmari aur abhay chautala ko nikala nahi jata ya ye jab tak tyag patra nahi dete तब तक आईओ के साथ हम किसी प्रकार की डीलिंग नहीं करेंगे द आईओ ए क्लेम्ड दैट द पोस्ट वर ऑनररी एंड दैट नो एग्जीक्यूटिव अथॉरिटी विल बी गिवन टू देम इट स्टेटेड दैट इट हैड टेकन अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली लेजिटिमेट डिसीजन इज अ इज अ ऑनररी पोस्ट इन व्हिच यू नो दे हैव नो रोल टू प्ले सी द हाउ द डिसीजंस आर टेकन इन द आईओ ए सी द हु आर द मेंबर्स ऑफ द आईओ ए द मेंबर्स आर the elected representative in the sports federation number 1 three three vote hote hain unke and the state olympic committee chairman and the general secretary they cannot go against their national against their national federation president jo mujhe banaya gaya ya mere se pehle jin logon ko banaya gaya un logon ki kahin na kahin sports ke andar badi uplabdhiyan rahi hai maine jo reaction dekha sarkar ki taraf se खास करके जो विजय गोयल जी का जो रिएक्शन था इस पर बड़ी हैरानी की बात थी वो ये कह रहे थे कि अभय सिंह चौटाला के खिलाफ क्रिमिनल केस है उनके खिलाफ भ्रष्टाचार के केस है मेरे खिलाफ जो मुकदमा है आज की तारीख में वो कोई क्रिमिनल केस नहीं है दी आई ओ ए नेम्ड कलमाड़ी एंड चौटाला एज लाइफ प्रेजिडेंट एट इट्स एनुअल जनरल मीटिंग इन चेन्नई ऑन ट्यूजडे The decision sparked instant anger as both have faced serious corruption charges in the past. Many sections instantly demanded a rollback of the decision. It's not surprising for me because I've been watching these people in sports arena, in federations, IOA for last 35 years, and nothing has changed, corruption-wise, the way they handle the athletes like slaves. So whatever has happened. Kalmadi and Chotala, all these people are, are supported by all uh, IOA, all the federations, and they are made life presidents. I'm not surprised. Kalmadi served as IOA president from 1996 to 2011 and was jailed for 10 months for his involvement in the 2010 Delhi Commonwealth Games corruption scandal, but was later released on bail. Chotala, on the other hand, served as the president of the IOA from December 2012. to february 2014 when the sports body was suspended by the parent international olympic committee for fielding charge sheeted candidates at the elections his election as ioa chief was annulled by the ioc bureau report rajesh sabha tv russian officials have for the first time admitted to mass doping in country's sports system months after a state sponsored doping scandal surfaced earlier this year according to the new york times the russian official said It was an institutional conspiracy and denied it was a state sponsored program. Russian sports officials had previously denied the existence of any doping operation even as the International Olympic Committee opened dis- disciplinary proceedings against several Russian athletes. The latest WADA report claimed more than 1000 Russians benefited from a doping cover up between 2011 and 2015. More than 100 Russian athletes were barred from competing at the Olympics in Rio this year. after the international olympic committee set criteria for russian athletes to meet including a clean doping past and sufficient testing at international events соглашение с британским антидопинговым агентством которое планирует тестирование российских спортсменов мы заключили соглашение с частными компаниями по отбору проб это со шведской компанией DTM и с немецкой PWC они непосредственно отбирают пробы у российских спортсменов Let's now take a look at some more sports news in Sports Beat Meghalaya will host the 
ट्वेंटी नेशनल गेम्स इंडियन ओलंपिक एसोसिएशन एक्सेप्टेड मेघालयाज बिड टू होस्ट द नेशनल गेम्स ओवर शेडोइंग फोर अदर बिडर्स आंध्र प्रदेश गोवा छत्तीसगढ़ एंड उत्तराखंड मेघालय विल बी द थर्ड नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट आफ्टर मणिपुर एंड आसाम टू होस्ट द नेशनल गेम्स गोवा विल होस्ट द नेशनल नेशनल गेम्स इन नवंबर 2017. Azhar Ali scored an unbeaten 205 as Pakistan declared on 443 for 9 before Australia made a comeback riding on David Warner's turn on day 3 of the Melbourne Test. The hosts ended on 278 for 2 after Warner's 198 run partnership with Usman helped to get Pakistan's lead to 165. Khwaja was unbeaten on 95 with captain Steve Smith on 10 not out. Liverpool closed the gap on Premier League leaders Chelsea to 6 points after maintaining their unbeaten home record with a convincing 4-1 victory over Stoke. Walters gave Stoke the lead, but Adam and Roberto scored before half-time to give Reds the lead. Liverpool then added one more in the second half to Sturridge and as Stoke on goal put them in second spot in the table. Let's take another short break here. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. events that motivate inspiring the innovative spirit watch rajya sabha television documentaries welcome back In a historic visit, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and US President Barack Obama laid wreath for the victims of Pearl Harbor at the USS Arizona Memorial. Japanese Prime Minister Abe offered condolences to the people who were killed in the Japanese attack on December 7, 1941. Abe's trip comes 75 years after Japan mounted a surprise attack on the naval base that thrust the United States into the Second World War. US President Barack Obama has visited the city of Hiroshima. オバマ大統領、アメリカ国民の皆さん、世界のさまざまな国の皆さん、私は日本国総理大臣として、この地で、Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe offering condolences to the Pearl Harbor victims 75 years after Japan mounted a surprise attack on the naval base that thrust the US into the Second World War. Abe was accompanied by US President Barack Obama, making it the first visit by the leaders of both countries. The Japanese Prime Minister praised the US for its efforts to mend relations with Japan following the war between the two countries. He called the renewed alliance between the countries an alliance of hope. 今までにも増して世界を覆う幾多の困難に共に立ち向かう同盟です。明日を開く希望の。U.S. President Barack Obama said Abe's visit showed the power of reconciliation, adding that together they wanted to send a message to the world that there was more to be won in peace than in war. Today, the alliance between the United States and Japan, bound not only by shared interests but also rooted in common values, stands as the cornerstone of peace and stability in the Asia Pacific. And a force for progress around the globe. Our alliance has never been stronger. In good times and in bad, we are there for each other. The two leaders stood solemnly in front of a wall inscribed with the names of those who died in the 1941 attack, and took part in a brief wreath-laying ceremony. 
Earlier, both leaders held a summit meeting in Hawaii where they held talks on strengthening bilateral ties. Japanese forces attacked Pearl Harbor on the morning of December 7, 1941, killing 2,300 U.S. servicemen. The war ended shortly after the U.S. dropped two atomic bombs on Japan in August 1945. Bureau Report, Sabha TV. Let's now take a look at some more international news in Global Buzz. A bomb attack targeted a member of Afghanistan's parliament in Kabul, wounding him and several other people. An MP from Bamiyan province and his son were wounded in the blast. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the attack. The vehicle in which the MP was travelling was destroyed, while others were also badly damaged. Last week, another member of parliament was targeted by a suicide bomber who killed seven people. Turkey and Russia have agreed on a proposal for a general ceasefire in Syria and will aim to put it into effect by midnight on Wednesday night. The two sides reached a consensus that focuses on expending the ceasefire that was established in Aleppo this month. Meanwhile, airstrikes have killed at least 22 people, including 10 children in eastern Syria. The raids hit an IS-controlled village, killing 12 people from one family and 10 from another. Search teams have recovered another flight recorder from a military plane that crashed into the Black Sea, killing all 92 aboard. The first flight recorder was found on Tuesday and experts are already analysing its data. The Tu-154 of the Russian Defence Ministry crashed into the sea on Sunday, two minutes after taking off from good weather from Sochi. 15 bodies and 239 body fragments have been recovered so far from the crash site. That's all in this news bulletin. Keep watching Rajaspa Television. Thank you.